Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today I'm going to teach you what I've learned in the past, gosh, like three or four years since I released my first how to build a soundproof, soundproof lesson video. <laughs> so this is the 2025 update for those of you who want to build a soundproof window, whether that is a control room window uh, through your wall into your live room or just a window to let some light into your pleasant space so you don't feel like a vampire. This video is for you. Before I jump in, I always have a free resource for you guys. This is my free soundproofing workshop. You can download it right away or actually watch it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. It's free, 45 minutes, in-depth teaching. It's awesome. For those of you who do not want to DIY and are tired of researching and just want some, frankly, some help designing your studio, uh, skip that whole process. Go straight to the point. Sign up for my free soundproofing uh, clarity call, soundproof clarity call at soundproofyourstudio.com. Just click on the clarity call button and you'll be there. All right, enough jibber jabbering. I'm going to jump right into this lesson on how to build a soundproof window. I'm going to be showing you exactly how I did it with one of my client's files. Let's dive in. <laughs> All right, what is up guys? Welcome to this project where I recently put in this soundproof window into my client's studio. Whoa, just flying through the wall like that. And you can see here, uh, the only thing it's missing, let me show you real quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I made this, this window. Um, so there's the fin final window right there, beautiful. This is how I like to do them, just kind of a nice one by two wood trim on the outside and on both sides here. This would be like a pressure treated, so it could be like a hardy plank, uh, cement board trim, whatever you want it to be. Uh, and then two pieces of glass, a nice gigantic airspace as we can see here, and then the nice trim on the outside. So let's let's break it down. I actually have these pre-made views and we're just gonna start out with one of the pre-made views here. For those of you listening on the podcast, uh, I'm going through and I am just gonna show some of these pre-made views in SketchUp. Uh, but if you are listening on the podcast, this might be one that you kind of want to do YouTube on. It's a very visual one. All right, so down to the window, and I'm going to start with actually, this is going to be pretty cool to see. So you guys can really see what's going on in this window. And this is kind of what you would see in the plan. So I, I want to talk about this first, and then we can kind of go deeper into what's going on. So in this situation here, we've got a concrete wall on the outside which is somewhat abnormal, but it, it happens more in garages and stuff. And then a two by four wall on the inside, this little thing right here that you're seeing is actually the wick isolation clip that's going to be sway bracing support. Not part of the window, but just that I pointed out. Down here, so we've got our two layers of five eighths inch drywall above and below the window. We've got our wood trim, which you can see here. So this is like a one by two. And then what we've got here are, is the window, um, casing around which this does and I yeah, right now I've been usually really using like a a three-quarter inch I'm gonna actually do it this way this is looking in 3d is kind of cool and actually let me do this from a perspective section cut which makes a lot more sense in 3d visualization so when we look at I'm gonna go from the inside to the outside and show you how this window is built so that you can potentially build your own windows so there's here's our top plate of our, our wall here. So you can see there's the, the concrete wall, then we have just this regular pink insulation or any sort of cheap insulation in here that fills a two by four cavity. Uh, we've got our two by four and then the top plate of the window here. And then what we have is a piece of rubber uh, uh, underneath that goes on the bottom and the top of this window design which is pretty cool. So you can see that rubber there and that covers the cavity. I do this with my doors as well. It's just a great way to do this um, so that you don't get like weird smells and it, and it creates a gap here in between the cavity. The rubber, 16th inch rubber, very thin, does not couple our walls together in any sonic way. So that's not a problem. That goes all the way from the outside there to the outside here where the drywall is. Um, sometimes I actually don't have it go all the way to the drywall and I have the drywall come over it. Uh, either way is fine, it doesn't really matter. So then what we have is our inside window here, 3 8 inch. So this is our 3 8 inch um, glass and this is usually going to be the laminate glass on the inside. And then we'll have the tempered half inch tempered glass on the outside. The reason for that, just so you guys know, is that the the half inch glass is going to be 
um, better suited for the exterior, the tempered glass, uh, and then the laminate glass is going to be better suited for the interior of our design. So, and another thing, so the, the tempered glass is stronger and more impact resistant. Uh, and I'm actually reading some of my notes here that I have for myself, uh, which makes it more well suited for exposure to the elements and it can better withstand outdoor weather conditions, accidental impacts and thermal stresses, which makes it ideal for the exterior facing application. So I put the tempered glass on the outside, lamb it on the inside. The fact that they're different helps with the soundproofing. Another really big thing about this is that the gap here of one foot three quarters of an inch is super important that's our spring so remember in in a soundproof system we have mass on the outside a spring of air in the middle and then mass on the other side the differing masses of the windows is also very important and this is to help with the coincidence frequency which for us acoustic nerds just means that every single piece of material in the world will have a frequency where sound is more likely to get through that piece of material because it matches the vibrational sympathetic vibration of the material itself which allows that frequency to get through more easily uh, therefore creating what's known as an acoustic hole and so in glass this is really common i have <laughs> no idea why there's balloons that just went by um, and so that allows us to then um, have differing holes at differing frequencies so whatever frequency gets through this hole it won't as easily get through the same hole on the other side, uh, which is kind of the point there. Okay, back to how this all works. So let's come back here. What we do here, which is, is all really fancy schmancy, but what I like to do is I use a little bit of rubber uh, all the way around. So this is gonna be quarter inch rubber, like quarter inch by, oh, what do we got here? Three eighths. Um, some people, you know, Roger Vice says to use setting blocks. I tried that, I thought about it. I was like, I don't like it. I don't like it, Rod. So I created my own system where it's just continuous rubber. This is glued to this bottom piece here. Acoustic sealant always keep everything super, you know, you can use silicone around here as well. These guys right here are kind of fancy. This is, these are called um, glazing tape. So glazing tape uh, goes around here. And what's really cool about the glazing tape is that you can stick the trim to this and it creates a solid seal and then we create stick the trim this is three qu uh, three quarter inch quarter round uh, that then fills this gap here and makes like a nice clean uh, space around there so that's how that works all the way around the window glazing tape both sides creates a nice solid airtight seal that's clean uh, when we first did this we used silicone here we didn't use glazing tape just to kind of really and silicone's cool but it's kind of like sticky and it can it's not as clean so the glazing tape is what window installers use so you can do that and uh like i said three quarter inch round and then with the frame here i like to use this is one and a quarter inches thick um and i like to use a frame that is also like a hardwood so you might have to mill this yourself this is where it gets a little tricky uh, you could use two by fours if you wanted, but it's just gonna be so thick and then your window gets so much smaller. And so the one and a quarter is a little bit nicer. Uh, you could even probably get this down to three quarters of an inch if you wanted for the frame, but make sure it's a hardwood, not something soft like pine where you can kind of like stick your thumb, you know, your fingernail into it and it, and it indents. You don't want a, a soft wood. Um, then what we have here is some insulation. So this is just a nice big gap. This is going to be uh, one and a quarter inch as well. It'll be kind of pressed down. So you could use two inch insulation or you could use rock wool. Uh, I like to use Knopf Ecos insulation here and you might have to trim it down a little bit for it to work with this frame and everything. No big deal. Then we use acoustic fabric and then this is going to be uh, like a lattice. I, I found it actually uh, here in the States. It's like a lattice framing. Um, it's pretty, pretty thin. This is like a um, it's like a quarter inch thick, you know, piece of wood. Uh, just for, for trim, it's gonna cover up the staples of this acoustic fabric that you put all the way around the window. So we have insulation all the way around, um, lattice framing all the way around that so that it looks really clean and, you know, stain. I like to stain these all like a dark wood color. That's my personal preference, but you can do whatever you want. You paint it. Um, this guy, you can see that this shows, so you want to stain whatever hardwood frame you use around. So when you look in the window, you just see beautiful fabric and a beautiful hardwood. Uh, you can put some desiccants down in here if you're worried about moisture, but it's never been a problem. 
Um, the outer window is the exact same thing in reverse. So we got our quarter inch round, three quarter inch round that goes here. Build that frame, stick it with the glazing tape. Um, make sure you have the rubber going all the way around so the window can sit within that rubber there. And then you finish off with um, the trim on the outside there. Uh, and then, you know, if there's a little gap or something here, you can always put a little bit of silicone in there uh, and just make sure it's really clean and doesn't get messy on the window. You can always use acoustic caulk too, but it's like a white thing. So with windows, you got to be a little careful that it doesn't get too messy. Mine, my windows look all right. There's a little, you can see they're not the most clean. It was, we were, this is our first window ever. So if you want it to be super clean, you know, this is where the detail comes in. Um, you're probably wondering how much these windows cost. It really depends on the supplier of the glass. A lot of these materials are not too expensive. The glass is what costs a fortune, and I've seen it range so, so much. I think these, each pane is probably in the like 150 to 350 range here, but I, I spent almost $350 a square foot, I think, on my glass. Maybe I got ripped off. I don't know, but it was expensive. So uh, that is the soundproof window in a nutshell, guys. I hope this video was really helpful. Hope you learned a lot. Uh, let me know in the comments, all that stuff. And uh, I got a little outro here, but thanks for watching. All right, I hope that was super helpful. Um, 2025 update, maybe there'll be a 2027 soundproof window update someday. I feel very confident that this design will get you guys exactly what you're looking for when it comes to a soundproof window. Remember a couple of things. This design assumes that you have two layers of drywall on one side, two layers of drywall on the other side, roughly speaking, mass uh, proportionate. Honestly, I use these windows for so many of my designs because I just know they work so well. Uh, if I had a super, super, super soundproof room with like four layers of drywall on both sides or something like that, I would have to adjust the window width accordingly to match the mass of the windows. This is kind of complicated because it's not really a mass to mass correlation. It's actually a little bit less mass needed for the window because of the fact that we're using temp tempered or laminate glass, which makes it a little bit better. If you, were, if you were to use float glass, it would actually be more of like a straight mass to mass comparison. So all that's really complicated and not so much fun. So if you don't want to do that, like I said before, you can always get on a call with me and potentially we can work together as a team. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash no slash actually just click on the clarity call button sign up for a clarity call and i would love to see you on there we'll just talk over zoom learn about your project for those of you who want to keep researching and doing the diy thing i respect you it's all good i did it myself uh you can sign up for that soundproofing workshop just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop and you will be able to learn tons of stuff in 45 minutes everything i know about soundproofing for the most part jammed into that workshop all right enough of me talking here get back to what you need to do in your life thank you all so much for watching i appreciate you here's to a solid and wonderful 2025 coming up here this year and uh to you all making beautiful wonderful home studios or recording studios or soundproof rooms whatever it is you're doing i wish you the best of luck in 2025 all right thank you all so much